You're listening to the Hustonomics Podcast, episode 55. Since social media came onto the scene, businesses have been trying to figure out the best way to utilize it to increase brand awareness and sales. The roller coaster of trying to keep up with the constant changes and updates since then has not only been exhausting, but it's also left a lot of business owners feeling frustrated and inclined to give up altogether. That's where Anna comes in. Her passion is helping business owners really utilize social media in a smart, efficient, and tolerable way to grow their businesses. Her goal is to show entrepreneurs how they can use social media as a tool that actually helps them drive sales instead of just giving them a headache. One of the things that Anna mentioned that I love in this episode was that when you help educate and empower women, you're not only helping one person. You're also helping empower her family and her community. You're helping her achieve financial freedom that ignites a chain reaction so that she can help someone else as well. I know you're going to get tons of amazing and useful information from this episode, so let's go ahead and jump in. You're listening to the Hustlenomics Podcast, a podcast all about inspiring female creative entrepreneurs, their stories, experiences, and life lessons. Hear from women working in creative industries who are breaking the rules and doing things their way. Learn from their challenges, struggles, failures, and successes, and get an inside look at their top tools and resources that help them along the way. Hi, everybody, and thank you for tuning into the Hustlenomics podcast. I'm your host, Katie, and today I am super excited to be talking with Anna Kochakova. She is a social media strategist and a good social ambassador. She helps women in established service businesses grow and scale their business using Facebook ads and social media. So, Anna, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. All right. So I'd love if you would elaborate a little bit and tell the listeners a little bit more about you and what you do. Absolutely. I'm more than happy to do that. I think I think social media and just even digital marketing in general, it's just such a hot topic and everyone loves talking about it. But there's also so much misunderstanding and confusion. And I've entered this world almost a decade ago now and went through so many changes, but I just always loved it. And I always loved working with businesses and trying to help them understand how to use social media better and just how to utilize it as, as a tool. And for that reason, for that reason, I've been doing it for such a long time. And it, even though it's been changing over this last decade and the last um, almost five years of my business, it's just always new. It's always interesting, but there's also so many challenges. And I just feel very privileged that I have this opportunity to help people. That's awesome. So you got into this business kind of right when businesses were starting to use social media as part of their marketing strategy, right? Yes. I actually fell into social media from a different industry almost. It was still digital marketing altogether, but initially because I have a two master degrees in journalism, I came from writing background and I initially fell into social media out of SEO and copywriting and digital strategy. And then because digital marketing is such a big area, I figured that I, I it, there's just so many moving parts. We better isolate something that I'm really good at. And then social media came along for me. That's so funny. I actually have my master's degree in journalism as well and have been working in social media as well. So it's so funny, the similarities. I love that. It's it's um, it's lo looking like it's a fairly common in a way. There's a lot of business degrees, marketing degrees and journalism. I think it's great because it helps you to do the research better. It's just the right degree, I think. Yeah, I agree. So you got your degree in journalism. Is that what you originally were, were hoping to work in or was that something that you knew would help down the line with kind of your digital marketing? I was... 16 or 17 when I first made a decision to go into journalism. So I really didn't plan that far ahead at all. And my journalist, my first journalist degree was back in Russia where I was born and grew up. And back then we don't really take gap years and we don't really jump, jump away and travel and think about it. So I really had to make a decision and I made a decision to go into journalism because that was something that I was good at. Languages, history and writing was something I was good at. I really enjoyed it. And back in Russia, journalism was really excited, exciting as well. So it was a kind of cool industry to go into. I did hope to be a journalist, but halfway through my degree, I almost felt very disappointed in it. It was just very difficult. But then moving overseas to moving to Australia and completing my second degree here really inspired me again. It was a very different environment. So I felt like, oh, my God, this is actually really cool. I'll be doing that. And as I was studying, I got a job in marketing. And that's it. I was just, I was sold. 
Wow. Very cool story. Well, it's always interesting to hear people's backgrounds because it's just, you never know. It's, I've heard some crazy stuff that people are working in one industry and then jump over to another one. So I always find that interesting. So how long have you owned your own business? It's coming to my fifth year now and uh, it's been, it's been really cool. I know it feels like it's only been yesterday because over this five years I've pivoted about two times now. And I've initially worked a lot with startups and a lot with retail as well. And now I came to working with service businesses. And after having this experience of working with retail and working with startups, I realized those guys really need different strategy and the support they need is just very different from established service businesses. And it, it, is a, it, it is a lot more difficult and challenging for them to work with Facebook and social media specifically because they are still getting the funding and they're still growing. And most importantly, they're stabilizing. It's just the time for them to get for sales and get stable and then starting to grow. Whereas I focus a lot on the growth and, and this pivot really helped me to help more people and have a better impact. And then I still get to talk to retail and startups a lot. And, and most of the time I really say that, look, don't worry about it. Let's first stabilize your business and see what else you can do in digital marketing before you jump into social. So I'd love to kind of go back to when you first started. So had you always had the idea of maybe being an entrepreneur in your mind, or is this something that kind of surprised you that you wanted to do that? That's actually a really good question. I haven't thought about it for a while. Given that I grew up in Russia, the word businesswoman or entrepreneurs was really a very dirty word. My dad was a businessman and he was a lot in, he was in sales and it was just don't become a businessman in Russia, especially during the 90s and especially in Soviet times. Of course, there were no business. It was absolutely illegal. So I didn't have that. I didn't feel like I would be um, in business or I'd be, not at all. There was, there was something very opposite. You'd be scared to admit that that's what you're doing so after coming to australia and working with a few agencies and then working in-house as well in digital marketing and strategies sem um, seo and cooperating mostly i just figure out that a lot of things people were doing were just really not on point a lot of things people were doing are not i even happened to work with an agency that was just straight ripping people off and myself and there were a team of three of us and we literally walked out of the door and it was very traumatizing and I was very disappointed. I felt like this is, this is crazy. I can't be doing this. I need to find people I can work with. And I couldn't. I literally ended up starting my own agency because I was so frustrated with what people were doing. And of course, I felt very alone as well because I thought, why would I be offering something different? How do I know it's different? But after testing and trying so many different things, I knew I was doing something right. And I knew I could no longer work with any agencies or any other businesses that were not utilizing it correctly and either cheating or just making a lot of really painful mistakes. So falling into entrepreneurship for me wasn't really an accident, but I didn't, no, I didn't find that at all. No. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. So I'm looking at your website now. It's a good social only, correct? That's your agency? Yeah, that's right. So you work a lot with Facebook ads and social media ads. And I think we hear, you know, people talk about those all the time, but I'm not sure everybody really understands what they are, how they're different from other types of advertising. So do you mind just telling the listeners a little bit about what Facebook ads are and what social media ads are and how they're different from other types of advertising? Yeah, that's actually a very good call. And you're very right. People do confuse it sometimes with other paid form of advertising. And most importantly, I think people look at advertising and they think that just a click of a button would help them to get their leads. And Facebook advertising is, is literally just a machine. It's a tool that sits within Facebook. And if you have the right settings and have the right goals and you have the right stage of your business, you can actually use it really good for creating more leads for your business. doesn't necessarily mean that sales will just trickle through, but once you worked out the, the machine to create the leads, then you just convert them. That's why it's so important for business to have a really good sales process because then marketing just flows. But if that's that's a challenge for a business, then marketing is actually, or Facebook advertising specifically, is actually really, it can be a really big waste. But Facebook advertising is not just, it's not just boosting. And, and of course, it's not just likes and it setting up really clear and quite simple campaigns and using the right objectives and testing different messaging 
to bring more leads and don't streamline it. So you don't really have to go and market and sell and, and try to create more sales all the time. You can create the machine that can help you bring leads so that you can convert them. But I feel like it is really misunderstood and I see people misusing it a little bit and I feel I feel a little bit sad about it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It took me a little while to kind of get the hang of Facebook ads because there's a lot that goes into actually making them convert to leads, right? So for someone who might be interested in maybe using Facebook ads, but they want to make sure they're not wasting their money by doing them wrong, what's some advice that you would give them to start setting those ads up in a way that's going to be effective? I think the most important element would be first making sure that your message is actually ready and tested and the offer you have is validated, whether it's new business or not. And sometimes it might be new services introduced or you haven't tested them for a while. It's really helpful to make sure that the language and the message is the one that is connecting with the audience. And it sometimes sounds very simple, but the problem is that a lot of the times we are inside of our own business and we're just not thinking the way our customers and prospects are thinking. They are in a different place so to speak. So we need to go to that place and speak to them the language using the language they're using so we can connect with them and of course solve the problem. And I think when we're focusing on solving the problem rather than trying to market our services, it is a lot easier to set up any marketing and of course advertising as well. And um, if you wanted to go a bit tech into that, but I don't want to go too deep, I do want to mention that Facebook advertising has a few objectives before you even set up your advertising, it's good to figure out what objective is important for your particular goal. But Facebook objectives or Facebook advertising objectives, of course, are different from your business objectives. So it is important to, to pick which one you need and why. And that's, I think, where strategy comes in to just have a clear understanding. Okay, I'm setting up this campaign and these objectives because this is what I want to get. Right. Okay. Awesome. And so for people looking into maybe doing social media advertising, do you feel that it works for all different types of businesses or are there types of businesses that it might not be compatible with? How do you feel about that? That's a good question. Um, I feel that well, because I work with service businesses predominantly, I feel like if they've already tried some advertising and they already had some results from it, which means that their messaging is probably correct and they already validated it, advertising just becomes a tool for them. So conversions are a lot easier. So the groundwork is done. It is a bit more difficult for startups because they need to do that groundwork. And I feel that Maybe they don't always need to go into advertising straight away. That have said, you can definitely do that groundwork. So the messaging testing and trying to communicate your, your solution to people with the help of advertising is totally possible. And I've done it before, very successful. It's just costly. And I find it just a little bit difficult for some startups and including some retail because it will just appear too costly for them. That have said, I um, have had a conversation with someone actually recently and they are in retail or whatever they're selling is a very high end and there's an amazing story behind it. There's a great opportunity for them to try advertising. But then if we're talking about a much lower range, a lower price, it just advertising might be just too costly. That have said, Facebook is still the cheapest. It's a really cool place to look into. Yeah, so it's definitely still still the cheapest advertising. But people who already tried it a little bit or who already established their business to the point of having having the income, so it's the stream of income they're already receiving, of course, then they can afford running advertising. And then advertising would help them with scaling and would help them to create that machine of getting leads all the time rather than spending money on testing their message. Right. And I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of people, when they're like thinking about advertising, they're thinking, oh, this is going to cost hundreds of dollars. And it can. You can get a lot of bang for your buck with Facebook advertising. And I think that's what I like about it. And a lot of people don't realize you don't have to spend that much money to actually get a pretty big reach. Yes, exactly. And even with conversions, look, if conversions costed you even 10 bucks, for example, even 100 bucks for some, but what you're selling is five grand or 10 grand then you would be happy to spend this hundred bucks on the lead. But that's where it becomes tricky because if you're just testing it and then you're spending $10 per lead, it might be a little bit more expensive. But if you are having that machine already and you're spending 10 or hundred even dollars per lead, but you're converting for 10 grand, that's fine. That's very, very good. Yeah. Absolutely. So I see on your site that you work predominantly with women in service-based industries. So I'm curious what drew you to that niche 
and how you kind of got to be working with such a specific group of entrepreneurs. It's actually a very personal thing. I have that belief that women um, helping, I still actually, it's, it's actually very funny. I, I say that and I really want to work with more women because I feel like helping a woman would help the whole family, would help their children, would help just would help to create even a bigger and better world. But I work with a lot of men and probably half of my clients are men. And they are, they're very feminine though. So this is wonderful. But I, I, I just believe that if we're going to help a, a woman, we're going to help a family and then helping women make an impact and help them have that financial freedom just helps our world. And I just feel like I really want to help more women. My mom um, almost never worked in her life really. And my dad said, look, don't worry about it. And we're in the Soviet Russia. Don't worry about it. We're always going to be good. You don't need to ever work. I'll be looking after you guys. And then we well, went bankrupt um, one year and everything was really difficult. My mom never really got education, never really had a job. We were really struggling. And then when everything picked up again and my dad being a businessman finally helped us to, to go back on the feet. My mom was very worried and she, she never really had the skill, but she also never could contribute financially. And she felt very insecure for several years. And I felt like this is really scary. And some women out there might be, might be struggling, but they have some amazing talent or might be having some amazing business, some amazing skills. And they've, they're using them to, to create financial independence for themselves, then they can help someone else as well. And it's just a chain reaction. And I think this is so beautiful. Yeah, I agree. That's one of the main reasons why I started this podcast and I only interview women. It's a fascinating thing. And I, I love that about your business. I think that's really cool. So you mentioned working with and helping businesses with their growth. And do you work a lot with Instagram or primarily Facebook? Actually, choosing social media channels is a part of my strategy. So I would definitely work with whatever channel we think we should be utilizing. So yes, def definitely. Okay. okay. Well, with both Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, Pinterest, really anything out there. I think yeah. getting those numbers and having something to show when it comes to analytics is something that everybody's focused on and, you know, wants to learn how we can grow our accounts and all that stuff. So do you have um, some hacks or tips or, or th go to things that you do that are some solid, provable ways that, you know, help grow your accounts? If you mean growing the following and just creating that community, then I think this is something that used to be very, very big. A few years ago, before a few changes um, with social media networks, I would actually have it almost like a step in my campaigns and to grow that community because back in the days, having a community on social media would be really beneficial. It's almost like having a database. Once you have them there, now you can communicate your message to them. And if they're the right target, and of course we want them to be the right audience, then they would love what you're sharing with them. It's still true. And I, most of the pages I work with, Facebook pages, are actually quite large and they're very engaged. And when I, when I take up a new client, I do social media audits. So I need to go through and see what's been done before. And I see how engaged the pages are. Because then I know if we can actually even sell organically, which still works and algorithms do not affect those people. They're totally, they're totally fine and they still collect all the fruits from that. But if it's a fairly new page, this following doesn't really matter that much because advertising will bring following as a byproduct. And it would be a very targeted, uh, very targeted audience as well because your, your ads will be targeted. So you don't need to specifically grow it. It's a little bit different, of course, with Instagram and Instagram being all the amazing images. I think the being authentic and being yourself is the most important thing on Instagram. But it is very challenging there because of the bots and because of uh, many restrictions that Instagram now has as well, what Facebook created for them. So I find it really challenging. But there's particular services and I work with um, aviation, for example. And I was uh, very surprised the first time we started working about a year ago that people in aviation love Instagram, crazy about it. And we're talking about um, guys in their 50s and 60s, usually married, who love travel, and they love sharing their stories on Instagram. So Instagram grows organically like crazy for us, and it's been really easy. But then we're talking about, say, fitness, and it might be too saturated to even look into Instagram. And besides all that, I think having a particular goal, why would you want to grow that community, is really important. 
and then choosing the steps of getting there. And I think just besides the, the point of having bigger community, it's it's really beneficial to look into why you need to, to create it and then choose the tools of getting there and just understanding that this community will bring you this or that and knowing it would just really make it easier for people because I've noticed how often people want to have bigger communities on social media. But when I ask them, what do they think that will bring for them? They're saying, oh, I'm sure I'm going to be, my sales are going to be trickling straight away. But that's not always the case. So maybe sometimes when you just strip it back and really nail one place and then expand as the business grows. Yeah, I like that. And I'm so glad you mentioned engagement because sometimes we get all wrapped up in the numbers, right? But really what's the... What's really important is how engaged your community is, not how many there is in the community. So what are some ways that you found that fosters engagement and, and encourages people to really interact with each other on these accounts? The people I work with have noticed that the solution that they're selling to start with is really valuable to their customers. And then when we run advertising, the likes just come in. And so the community is just as a byproduct. They, they just start growing. And then organic contact rate, uh, content resonates with them. But that's something I always test in, in my work. Every now and then we would put something new in and we'll test it. But the, the backbone of that would be not just the story, but the, the solution and the messaging that that business has. And it's not even about very specific pieces of content, though that's definitely something, but it's just really detailed work already. But this solution and the messaging, so using the words that prospects want to hear or the words that they're using and offering them a solution that touches their hearts generates crazy engagement. And it's working really good for us. And I'm currently working with someone on their rebranding in the, in the fitness industry, and we're testing exactly that, going away from the traditional bikini shots and jumping more into supporting women's health of any sizes and genders and different health states for people as well. And that's been really great. And people were surprised to see that as well. So I was actually really thrilled to see that feedback it was a bit surprising for me as well. But it's that messaging that really helps to connect with people and they engage with it because you are speaking to them, to exactly their problem. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. That's a great tip. So I'd love to kind of uh, jump over to the topic of, of you being a business owner. And you mentioned you've pivoted a couple times. And so I'm curious, what has been one of the biggest struggles that you've come up against as a business owner? And how did you kind of push through that and overcome it? I think the biggest struggle I've had so far is, it's also been fun too, is <laughs> having those actual conversations about social media being a tool. And I've been really active recently and I've given a few talks and appeared in, in a few communities actually, trying to remind people that we have very much emotion wrapped up right social media right now. And we feel really strongly about it. And some people join the camps of deleting Facebook completely. And then others disappointed they don't get sales because their Facebook was Facebook ads were not set up correctly and everyone is really engaged in it but there's so much emotion and that's why I'm a good social ambassador I want to remind people you can actually use it for the good you choose what you do with that and Facebook has been amazing for me to keep in touch with my friends back overseas and most of my friends moved all over the world but for example Russia being a bit of a closed up country rather than the rest of the world I still keep in touch with some of my friends and actually encourage some of them to be a little bit braver, given given the environment they live in, connecting with the family, of course, and and talking about social media being just a tool. I receive messages from people occasionally who tell me, thank you for saying this. I just feel so relieved. I don't need to chase this fame. I don't need to chase this and that. So relieved. I felt like I had to do it. And people keep telling me, you have to be on top of social. You have to be on top of everyone's mind. Keep doing it. Noise, noise, noise. And they feel so tired of it. The truth is they don't need to do that. And this has been quite challenging for me because I had pushbacks and because I had this conversation so many times and I still see people struggling and it breaks my heart sometimes. But it's been really great as well because I want people to just realize one simple little thingy. It's just a tool and you choose how you're going to use it. Yes, I love that. I love that. It is so hard to remember, but that is something that we should all remind ourselves every day. 
Yeah, you're right. We do get wrapped up in it and it can be very difficult to kind of unplug and take the emotion out of it. So I love that social media is just a tool. (laughs) We need to say that every day. So do you have any books or podcasts or courses or anything out there that has been helpful for you, you know, as a business owner and starting your own business, anything out there that's been helpful that you would recommend to the listeners? I think the biggest support for me has been the community of women in business that I'm a part of. It's actually no specific place. I've connected them in different uh, in different communities and different channels. But um, I work with an amazing business coach and she has a podcast and a group as well, uh, women in the business arena. And she talks a lot about things like that. So how we get wrapped up into marketing too much before actually getting first sales. And remembering that you need sales before marketing is something seems to be very novice to many people, which quite surprised me actually. And her, some of her messaging helped me to reinforce what I've been doing as well and reminded me of a few things as well, such as what is the value of marketing and how you should be clear about why you invest in the market and specifically and not think that this is a solution to everything in your life. But she also talks a lot about ethical use of marketing and ethical business and things like that. So really, really love her podcast and go to her group quite often, actually. I don't, it's called uh, Women in the Business Arena. And uh, she, the, the business coach is Sonia Statman that I work with and she is based here in Australia, but she's just about to travel over to America where she's from. So she's going to be doing a bit of traveling around while working around America and then Europe and hopefully come back and being a bit of a digital nomad with her family, which has been really fascinating because some women I've been talking to are working so much and they feel like they need to work more to produce more, but they really want to go travel and want to spend more time with their families or pursue their hobbies, and they're really burning out. So I'm quite happy that Sonia talks about stop doing all that and finding the way to be able to do what you love, still make an impact, still work ethically, but also travel the world if you if you wanted to. And I think she's going to be an example like that. We'll see how she goes with her travel. So that's been really, really good for me. For example, I don't unfortunately know too many women in that space that, that I follow. Um, I do love some messaging of Seth Gordon, for sure, because he talks a lot about ethics. And uh, that has been a really good reminder for me as well. Great. Well, I will link to all that in the in the show notes so all the listeners can find that and check it out for themselves. I think that sounds awesome, being able to travel and still run your business. That's definitely the dream. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, then that's great. <laughs> So do you also mind letting the listeners know where they can find you? Because I know everyone's going to want to take a look at everything you're doing and learn more about you. Sure, sure, absolutely. I am very happy to connect with people on Facebook and I really welcome personal messages as well. So you can easily just find me as Anna Kachet Kaiva or head over to the Facebook page, which is Good Social Only on Facebook. I love personal connections more than anything. So personal Facebook is shoot me a message if you've got a question or you want to chat about anything to do with marketing. If you want to check out the page, I'm more than happy for you to do that as well. But I actually do love when people just come to you and they say, hey, I heard this now. What do you think? Or can you help with this? It just feels so much closer and so much more personal and just so much easier than worrying about pages or other extra marketing. So far away with that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that and for sharing all of these awesome insights about social media. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, pleasure. Thank you so much for having me here. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's interview. Don't forget that you can check out previous episodes as well as all the show notes at www.hustlenomicspodcast.com. If you want to support the show, you can head over to iTunes and leave a rating or a review. Each review means so much to me and it really helps the podcast on the business end. If you want to find another way to support the show, we're also on Patreon. You can find a link to our Patreon on our website. If you have any questions or you have a topic you would like to hear covered on the show, feel free to DM me on Instagram or send me an email. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Hustlenomics podcast. Be sure to visit www.hustlenomicspodcast.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover bonus content. If you enjoyed today's episode and want to hear more, just head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. For questions about the podcast or if you want to apply to be a guest, use the contact form found on our website. 
Thank you for listening. And until next time, keep hustling.